If you're a software engineer that's going to go out and build any type of product, one of the most important things you're probably going to be doing is adding some type of analytics to your application because you kind of want to know how other people are actually using your application rather than sitting in a blank abyss. And for so many years, Google Analytics has been the default way of how engineers add analytics and eventing into your application. But is it really the best solution? I actually don't think so. I mean, maybe back in the day, don't get me wrong, Google Analytics was really important because it was incredibly powerful and robust of how well it did analytics and eventing, there are two major problems regarding Google Analytics. Number one is a migration to using UA and GA3 all the way to using GA4. Now, don't quote me on this because I'm definitely not an expert on Google Analytics as a product, but from a couple of my friends that I've talked to who are very in the weeds of how Google Analytics work, the base consensus is GA4 sucks and it is nowhere near as good as UA or GA3, but it is there anyways. But they still went ahead with this migration and have dropped support for UA and GA3 and GA4, which is a subpar product compared to its predecessors is nowhere near as good as it used to be in terms of analytics and eventing. And on top of that, do I even need to talk about the crazy major privacy concerns that have been going on over the past decade with regards to big companies like Meta and like Google regarding to how they track user information and use it within their products? Probably not. I'm a firm believer that you should be using an open source solution and not a closed source solution like Google Analytics because once again, we kind of have no idea what is actually going on behind the scenes under the hood but how they use that user data. So that's why I do not use Google Analytics. I haven't used Google Analytics probably within the past two to three years. That's why in this video, I want to recommend two different types of analytics tool. Number one being a bit more of a direct replacement to Google Analytics and number two being like kind of like Google Analytics plus a lot of other bells and whistles. And the best part is that they are both open source so you know exactly what is going on with the analytics that you are tracking. A great open source alternative to Google Analytics is called Plausible. It's pretty bare bones, really just you add it into your website and you get analytics tracking to see how many people are coming in, traffic breakdown, user breakdown, that's about about it. Can't do any fancy event tracking like if you click on this button, what's the funnel like? What's the retention like? And if you want something that is more powerful, then I highly recommend that you use PostHug, which also is the sponsor of today's video for full disclosure. But if you have watched any of my videos in the past, you already know I've been using PostHog for so many years, for so many projects, a lot of failed projects, but still projects nonetheless. And that's why when PostHog came over and told me that they wanted to sponsor one of my videos, I was so excited to say yes, because I am a huge believer in the product and have been a huge user in the product for many years already. And the reason why I personally use PostHog over Plausible, for example, is because PostHog is way more powerful. It's not just a user analytics tool to just get traffic breakdown, how many visitors are coming to your website. It also has way more bells and whistles, so many more features like A-B testing, feature flags. So let me go over and show you my actual PostHog for my various projects that I've built to show you just exactly how powerful PostHog is compared to other analytics tools out there. All right, so this is what PostHog looks like underneath the hood. And as you can see, I have multiple organizations as well as multiple projects hosted on PostHog. So I've actually been a very, very long time user of this product way before this video. And the reason why I say PostHog is not just a simple analytics platform, but it's actually way more powerful is if you look at over here on the left hand side, you can see way more than just simple analytics. You have session replay, feature flags, A-B testing, surveys, data warehouse, and so much more features coming in. And PostHog is essentially trying to become like the all in one product operating system to provide provide you with everything that you possibly may need to build the best product out there. And yes, it is completely open source, which is crazy. Now, if you're looking for the most bare bones type analytics, you probably want to go over to web analytics. They actually didn't have this type of analytics tooling built in, but recently in the past couple months, maybe the past year or so, they released this web analytics tab as a beta feature. And it has been so great because I used to use both plausible as well as post hog. I would let plausible handle all of my general analytics. And then I would use post hog for more granular eventing things such as use looking at user retention, seeing how many times users are going through a particular funnel that I laid out in my application, as well as feature flags and A-B testing. But now that PostHog added in web analytics into their tool, I no longer have to use Plausible anymore because PostHog has it all set up for me right here. And one thing that I really love that PostHog does super well that I think Google does a really poor job doing is their developer documentation, particularly their developer documentation of using a much more modern full stack engineering framework like Next.js. PostHog does a phenomenal job of doing that. It walks you through just how to set everything up. It really simple. Over the years, they've actually reduced the amount of code that you have to add to your product to get post hog working there. And I have no complaint. For example, you can do things like automatically tracking page views. It's a little bit less out of the box necessarily because it's not just that you add this library into your application and it handles everything for you. You still have to manually add a couple of things to get all the analytics that you want. For example, right here, if you want to track unique page views, they actually have this code laid out for you on how exactly to monitor for that and how to track the page view event with the current URL that you're in. And they also have separate libraries for the client side as well as the server side, which I find really useful because I use Stripe as my premium processor. And whenever I have an event coming in through a Stripe
Stripe webhook. That is how I track whether or not a user came out with a successful purchase, which is something that would have been a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more annoying if I had to handle that on the client side. But luckily they have both client and server side events to track any type of event that you want. I actually think the most powerful part about post hog is the ability to figure a reverse proxy to your post hog. Now, what this is useful for is that, as you all know, there are so many ad blockers out there in the world, myself included. And these ad blockers are really good at detecting when a Google library is installed or a meta library is installed so that they block any type of user analytics events when they are coming from these big sources and actually post hog is as well. And the reason for this is because these libraries are oftentimes defined on the client side and these ad block extensions can quickly find these types of libraries, nullify them and prevent any events being sent to them. But post hog has a great way to work around it by being able to configure a reverse proxy. Essentially what this reverse proxy does is that instead of sending an event from the post hog URL, it's like us.posthog.com or whatever area that you're in, it instead uses your website's URL. Like for example, I'm building this app called the Content Marketing Blueprint. Essentially it's just like a database of SaaS accounts that have gone viral on social media and showing you all the content that they've made to grow their product on social media. Check it out if you want. But instead of firing post hog events from posthog.com, which these ad blockers can detect and prevent the events from being sent out, the reverse proxy makes it so that all the events are being sent and tracked via the content marketing blueprint.com. And that makes way less events being stopped via an ad blocker because oftentimes, because if they're going to stop events from being sent out from any type of website like the content marketing blueprint.com, the entire website's going to crash. Post hug support for having this reverse proxy within Next.js and Vercel is so powerful because I think when I enabled the reverse proxy, I saw an increase in like 30% of my more events being funneled in every single day. Crazy, I know. And also, I just want to say that I really appreciate how Post hug has a very low learning curve. It's super simple to use the product. I am not an analytics god. I am not an analytics expert by any means necessary. But the way that they're able to make it so easy to set up these types of graphs and charts is just great. You can just see any types of events that you want to start tracking right here. And then from these events, you can automatically filter out internal and test users. You can break it down by certain fields. Like if I wanted to break it down by IP address, or if I wanted to break it down by Stripe customer ID or price ID or any other events or any other fields that these events are tracking, you can do that and it quickly lay out and quickly create any type of really useful, really easy to read graph product analytic. And not only do they have these useful graphs to see like how many times a specific event is happening, they also have user funnels, which is really interesting as well. Let me show you one really quickly. And here's an example of a user funnel I made for one of my older products. It's tracking how many people are signing up. And then from those people that sign up, how many end up initiating checkout and how many of those that are initiating checkout actually ends up successfully purchasing the product. These funnels are really powerful because you can start to see certain drop off points within your application and that can give you an insight of, oh, wait a minute, 50% of users are dropping off from this feature to the next feature. How can I fix that to make sure the user can experience that feature without any type of drop off instead? And like I mentioned, there's A-B testing as well as feature flags and session replays to actually record videos on how your users are out using your application. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm not going to go over the entire post hoc application and all the features that it has. I'm going to leave it there and just say that it is an incredibly powerful product operating system tool that kind of has everything that you need. Actually, one last thing, post hoc has an incredibly generous free tier. I think across four to five different applications, I have never crossed the free tier before because they give you 1 million events for free. I know that's a lot of events. If you break past the free tier, that's probably a good thing because that means your app is doing well and you have a lot of users. But for my apps, I actually haven't been worried about billing because I'm still in the very, very generous free tier of 1 million free events every single month. I love post hoc so much. It is a free slash affordable product analytics tool. And best of all, it is open source. So definitely check it out. I'll have a link below in the description as well. If you want to see it yourself, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. See you in the next one.